This time on Screencast a Week, we bring a favorite feature of Windows to the Mac, a global keyboard shortcut to open Finder. Welcome to Screencast a Week. I'm Kevin Yank. Today, I'm answering a question from Luke, one of the supporters of this show. Luke came to the Mac from Windows, and the one thing that he still misses from Windows is the Windows key E keyboard shortcut that let him open an Explorer window to browse his computer's hard drive from anywhere on his system. And he asked me recently whether there was something similar for OS X. Well, out of the box, the closest thing I can give you is Option Command Spacebar. You can hit that keyboard shortcut from anywhere, and by default, it'll open a Searching This Mac window. This is a Finder search window with a keyboard focus already put in the search box here. But because it is a Finder window, you can then go over to the left-hand side here and pick the folder that you want to start browsing from. It's pretty close, but that extra step of having to cancel the search operation and go start browsing your hard drive is probably just a little too annoying for something that you're going to use many times a day every day. But first of all, if this is good enough for you and it's just the keyboard shortcut that you don't like, well, let me show you where you can change that. You go into System Preferences and then in the Keyboard section, go to Shortcuts, Spotlight, and this second option here, Show Finder Search Window, is by default Option Command Spacebar. And you can change that to something a bit more memorable. I like Control Option Command F for Finder. And then you can just hit that keyboard shortcut and you get a new Finder Search Window just like that. But as I said, I find this search by default behavior a little annoying. So I'm going to set that back to the default and we're going to find something better. Now, OS X comes with a tool called Automator that lets you automate any action that you can describe using a programming language called AppleScript. Now, stay with me here. It's not as scary as it sounds. In Finder, I'm going to go to the Applications folder, and I'll find Automator here and launch that. And what I'm going to do is create a new system service, choose, and then in the Utilities section, I'm going to choose Run Apple Script. And I'm going to drag that component over into the document on the right here. Now I'm going to choose that this service receives no input, because it's going to do the same thing every time, no matter what. And then in the Apple Script editing field here, I'm going to replace Your Script Goes Here with Tell Application Finder. Activate and then make new finder window to home and then end. Now you don't have to get the indentation just right here because when you press this compile button, it formats the code for you automatically. But really, you can kind of read what I'm telling it to do here. I'm telling the application named Finder to activate to become the foreground application and to create a new Finder window that starts in my home directory. If you'd rather the window start in the root of your computer, listing all of the hard drives connected to your computer, you can make this say computer container instead, but I'm going to stick to my home directory. And just to test that out, I'm going to press play. And sure enough, I get a new Finder window with my user home folder there. And I can close these windows, try it again. There we go. Nice and quick. So with my script written, I'm going to save this file. And it's going to ask me what to name this service. I'll call it new Finder window. So now that I have that service saved on my system, how do I invoke it? Well, in the application menu of whatever application you happen to be using, you'll see this services menu, and my new service, new finder window, is right there on that menu. And if I choose it, I get a new finder window. So I can quit Automator now, and all that's left is to assign this service a keyboard shortcut. Once again, I'll go into System Preferences, in the keyboard section under shortcuts and this time I'll pick services and scroll right to the bottom under general you'll see your new service here and we'll assign a shortcut of control option command F and there we go now when I check out the services menu my shortcut is right there and from anywhere on my system I can open that finder window 
So just like that, using tools just built into OS X, that's how we can open a new Finder window using a global keyboard shortcut. But it's not quite perfect still. Once you set this up, you might find there's a bit of a delay every time you invoke that keyboard shortcut. It takes about a second on my system. And if I've got a lot of apps open, it can be a second and a half to two seconds. It's just long enough to be annoying. And the reason is that when you invoke that service, it's, it's actually launching a little application in the background that then runs that script that then tells Finder to open that window. And that whole process of events takes about a second to, to take place on a modern system. There's a faster way, but to do it, you have to install a third-party tool called FastScripts. I've already got it installed here. You can see it in my menu bar. FastScripts is by Red Sweater Software. You can find it on Google, and it's absolutely free for up to 10 scripts. So once you have it installed, FastScripts gives you this menu in your menu bar where you can see all of the scripts that are installed on your system and assign keyboard shortcuts to them. So what we're going to do is add our own script to this menu that opens a new Finder window. But before we do, we need to turn off the keyboard shortcut for the service that we've just created. So I'm going to go back into System Preferences, into Keyboard, Shortcuts, Services, and right down the bottom again, I'll just remove this keyboard shortcut by hitting Backspace. Okay, let's create our own script. To do this, we're going to use Script Editor, another application built into OS X. With Finder selected, I'll go into the Go menu, and this time I'll go into Utilities. And I'm going to find Script Editor in there. I'll launch that application, and I get a brand new AppleScript document here, and we're going to type the very same AppleScript code that we did before. Tell Application Finder to activate, and then make new Finder window to home and tell. I'll hit the compile button to make sure it's happy with my code, and then I'll hit play to try it out. There we go, I get my new Finder window with my home directory. And now I'm going to save this file. By default, the script editor wants to save my script in the Documents folder of my account, but there's a much better place to put script files, and that's in my Personal Scripts folder. But by default, I don't have a Personal Scripts folder. So going back into Finder here, I'm going to choose the Go menu and hold down the Option key to reveal my Library folder. My Library folder contains kind of all the hidden data for the applications in my user account. And if I scroll down, I can see there is no folder called Scripts. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and call it Scripts. This folder, even though it doesn't exist by default, is where both OS X and Fast Scripts expect to find all of the Apple Script files to do with my personal user account. So now that this folder exists, I can drag it over to this Save dialog, and I'll drop it straight on the Where drop-down menu. So now this file is going to save to my Personal Scripts folder, and I'll just call the script New Finder Window. Save, and now I can quit Script Editor and close this window. Now when I open the Fast Scripts menu, I have my new script showing right here in the menu. And the last thing to do is to assign it a keyboard shortcut. So I'll go into Fast Scripts Preferences, and then right here on the Scripts Shortcuts tab, I can expand my Personal Account Scripts folder, and then my new Finder window script, I'll give it a shortcut of Control, Option, Command, F. I'll close out these settings, and then I'll try out that keyboard shortcut, and there we go. That Finder window opens up nice and quick. This is the best way I know how to create a fast global keyboard shortcut to open a new Finder window from anywhere on my Mac. And best of all, it's absolutely free. Thanks for the question, Luke, and thanks to everyone else for watching. That's it for Screencast a Week this week. Head over to screencastaweek.com to find all the old episodes and to find out how to get new episodes a week early. Until next week, I'm Kevin Yank. Thanks for watching.